This video will discuss adiabatic processes in thermodynamics, specifically in relation to the expansion and compression of ideal gases. So the word adiabatic, in the context of chemical thermodynamics, means no heat. So if there's no heat that occurs during a process, we're defining Q, the heat of that process, to be zero, as you might expect. So the heat change that occurs during some infinitesimal change, some very small change in the system, du, du being an exact differential because internal energy u is a state function, equals dq plus dw. The change in energy is equal to the heat plus the work. Inexact differentials for heat and work because heat and work are both path functions. So du equals dq plus dw. We've said that for adiabatic processes, dq equals zero. So the change in energy for an adiabatic process is equal to the work done during that process. All right, so as I mentioned in the previous video, for a monatomic ideal gas, a relationship we derive from statistical mechanics, the internal energy is equal to three halves nRT, uh, the number of moles of gas times gas constant times temperature. That comes from the translational energy of the monatomic ideal gas. So we can define a, qu a quantity called the heat capacity, or specifically the constant volume heat capacity, CV of T. And this is the partial derivative of the internal energy with respect to temperature at constant volume. So how, f how quickly does the internal energy change as we change the temperature of the system? So in this case, uh, u is really only a function of t and the number of particles, but we're not interested in that right now. So u being only a function of t here, we can make that a normal derivative, d dt of 3 halves nRT for du dt. So the derivative of 3 halves nRT with respect to t is just 3 halves nR. So our heat capacity for our monatomic ideal gas is 3 halves number of moles times the gas constant. So the change in energy that occurs during some process is going to be du dt times dt. So the partial derivative of internal energy with respect to temperature times the change in the temperature, both for some small infinitesimal change, which we defined up here is equal to the work which gets done during that very tiny change. Okay, so the reversible work that occurs during the expansion or compression of an ideal gas is equal to negative nRT log V final over V initial, number of moles of gas, uh, gas constant, temperature, final volume of the gas, and initial volume of the gas. So if we take the part, we take the infinitesimal of this, we get that the reversible work the infinitesimal of reversible work is equal to negative nRT over V dV. The derivative of log of V with respect to V is 1 over V. So that's the amount of work that occurs during some very tiny change there. So we have constant volume heat capacity times the change in temperature equals negative nRT over V times the change in volume. So we can integrate both sides here, where we've got a dt over there and a dv over there. But first, we're going to have to divide both sides by t so that we isolate uh, the things that depend on temperature over here and the things that depend on volume over here. So we're doing some separation of variables here, a standard technique from an ordinary differential equations class. So we have the integral from the initial temperature to the final temperature of the constant volume heat capacity divided by temperature integrated with respect to T equals, I can factor out negative NR, that doesn't depend on V, equals negative number of moles times gas constant times the integral from the initial volume to the final volume of dV over V. All right, so if we assume that during this change in temperature range that our our heat capacity is approx our constant volume heat capacity is approximately constant, which is usually a pretty good approximation if this is a mild change in temperature. If, say if it's a, only a couple 
Kelvin or tens of Kelvin, it's probably a reasonable approximation. If it's hundreds of Kelvin, it's probably not. So if we assume that this is a constant with respect to T, then what we get is CV log T final over T initial equals negative NR log V final over V initial, where we've done both of these integrals and evaluated at the initial and final conditions. So we can also define a quantity now called the molar heat capacity. So the constant volume molar heat capacity, CV bar, is just the vo constant volume heat capacity divided by the number of moles. So the heat capacity per mole of particles. Typically, as any molar quantity will be, we just take whatever quantity we have, divide by n, and now put a bar on top. So I've divided out the n's here, so I can also divide both sides by r, and I get negative CV bar over r log T final over T initial equals log V final over V initial. So now I can take uh, both sides to the power of e and get rid of those natural logs, and what I get as a result is that the quantity T final over T initial taken to the power minus CV bar over r equals V final over V initial. So this is my relationship between temperature and volume for the reversible adiabatic expansion or compression of an ideal gas. So the relationship here, note that in isothermal processes we had the temperature as a constant. So the temperature was a constant and we added in whatever heat we needed to cancel out the work that we were doing. Here we have no heat so that work isn't getting canceled out, our energy is changing, and thus our temperature is changing, and that temperature change we can tell from how the volume changes and what the heat capacity of our system is. So the molar heat capacity for changes based off the type of gas that we have, the type of ideal gas that we have. For monatomic ideal gases, they only have translational motion. So from statistical mechanics, we see that you get a one-half NRT from each kind of degree of freedom. So they have translation in X, Y, and Z, three of them, or three halves R for a monatomic gas. For diatomic or linear ideal gases, they have those three translations plus two rotations. So you get five halves R for your heat capacity or your molar heat capacity. And for nonlinear polyatomic molecules, you have three rotations and three translations, so your heat capacity is six halves R or three R for your molar heat capacity. So when you're using this equation here, you need to know what are the initial and final volumes, what is the initial temperature, and paying attention to what kind of ideal gas you have so you know what to substitute in for CV bar over R.